Right folks, welcome back to episode 2 of Bulletproof Mindset um, So last episode, we obviously, you, you guys heard a little bit about James's background Today we will go into some of mine and just chat some more shit and take Yeah, we're just going to chat some shit because obviously mine and Dale's journey is a little bit different uh, He's been training a lot longer than me And he's also, if you don't know A lot the, bigger <laughs> <laughs> Is that all is it? <laughs> Is that uh, the one you were no, going no, with that no, one? No, no, no. no. <laughs> he, he squats and deadlifts uh, less than me. <laughs> being, being, being bigger, but, um, a bit weird. But anyway, uh, obviously, for you who don't know Dale, he is quite business minded as well in a, in a really good way. Uh, not just business minded and making money, just he knows how to get the right results for the right things. So obviously, we've got to go into that as we go, but I just yep. wanted to give the other compliment because oh, I don't, thanks, usually, don't usually give them. No, no, we're give them usually, usually slagging each other. Uh, right. Usually slagging each other, but I think compliments are. Should be the, Saying it should last be time, how, how to take a compliment. How to take a compliment, so they should, be gi- they should be given at certain times. So obviously, let's get into your story. Right. So we, I think we spoke a lot about how we started, but mm-hmm. let's get into a bit more. Right, so um, I've, you just jump in and uh, question anything that I'm not making sense of, but I started, so... Eh? I've written. I've written, right. So I was born in... <laughs> 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 no, so, um, so I'm 20 year, 28 years old. I would say a big chunk of my career and where I was before I got into fitness. I worked for um I, I worked for BT Telecoms company. Um I started an apprenticeship and that was my first kind of taste of business in the corporate world. And don't get me wrong, I was there for I think I think I want to say it's eight years. It was eight or nine years that I ended up being there. Learned a lot, met a lot of an amazing people and um, climbed the ranks and got into leadership very early on. I think I was about six months in, and this is where. So anyone that follows me, it's Coach Crosser. So my name actually stemmed from the corporate workplace. <laughs> <laughs> so Coach Crosser, I, 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 it's weird that this memory just sticks with me. Uh, so we were we were the first apprentices taking on, um, taking on it like, know, it's like twelve grand a year, right? So the minimum experience in this place was thirty years. And we were the first new uh, injection of younger people. We were the first apprentices in that place in a long time. There was a group of ten of us, um, and it was things like they would they rolled out a new system on the on the the computer, so a new software to deal with billing inquiries. And because I think it's because mainly we were younger, we were aye, we were computer literate. Um, I remember running on a bank holiday, running a course on how to like PC tips and tricks, and it was. Did you know you can hit Control C and that copies? I'm not even. I'm not even kidding, mate. I done Ooh. that. I done that, and there was not honestly no, people. But, oh, people wow. were generally. I'm not even kidding. People no, were like, I can imagine. that was actually really good, and this was like my first taste of helping other people, mm-hmm. coaching, mm-hmm. leading, pre- uh, presenting, and. So, so got this job a couple of months in, picked up the systems really well. Our, our whole group did. Um, there was actually a group of us who seemed to excel better than others, and we got moved out of the team and got the chance to go into a coaching position. So you were you had a team of like ten people, and then there was each co- each team had a manager and they had a coach that would help them with the systems and all that sort of stuff. So I managed to get that role, and there was a group of new another new group that ended up coming in the business, and I was helping this one wee guy, and he's like, ah, he's here pretty good at your job. I was like, I know, I was like, I'm best coach in here. And he's like, it's like that, that film, Coach Carter, except you're Coach Crosser. And I was like, ah, it's I, was like I like that name. So I changed my Instagram that day. I'm like, so that, that goes back as far as, I think it was 20, 2013. That was my Xbox gamer tag. Ah, it, yeah, was, yeah, I, yeah. it was everything. I liked ah, it. Yeah. I had a good rim to it. Rim to it? Ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a separate story. Ah, relax. <laughs> relax yourself. So yeah, so, that was my first experience in getting into the coaching world from a business perspective. And then from there, got my first management position. Um, my wife, Jillian, got a job down south. So I ended up looking... You got to, a wife? <laughs> you know but you don't tell me that shit. You this. So uh, we, can, we can do it, probably do a whole episode on... Um, on her alone, uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> where am I going? Oh, so Why would you say that? You throw me off. Oh, right. No, no, go. Right, go. so she she got a job down south, and with uh, BT being everywhere, I was like, I'm going to see if I can get a transfer. So reached out and managed to get a transfer. Lo and behold, the best thing that I'd done for my career because it projected me into um, a more senior position, leadership, and it's where I had probably the most stressful 
job, but at the same time, I learned a lot from running a team, mm-hmm. um, understanding business operations and all that sort of stuff. So I've I've had eight nine years of that experience, in, but I, of experience, but as I got closer, uh, once I got my first managing job, two years in, I started to go. What's next? I'm kind of mm-hmm. bored. Like I've uh, I, like I hit some of the best results that that team ever had. It was our team. I'm kind of just took my own horn here, but it's not the work that I've done. But I think through my leadership, the, the people that I had in that team, we managed to smash all the targets. We were, I believe, we were top team. Mm-hmm. Um, and hearing feedback from somebody that's been in the job for f- thirty years, uh, uh, good old John Wade, if he ever listens to this. I'll never forget the best compliment I ever got is from this guy because he, I got many good compliments, but this guy, I remember getting the team, right? So we sidetracked, so young guy, 20, 21 years old, and you get promoted to manager and it's like, right, new team that you get is usually the new hires that come into business. They don't know you really. You're the, you're the kind of young leader. You get ten, uh, usually people, young people. People really jealous as well. Aye, well, exactly. So so the, the whole site, there was a bunch of people and they had been in the job for ages. And uh, my boss at the time, Deb, she was like, right, I'm going to give you this team. You're going to have these people. And I was, I was shitting it. I was like, right. he's, this guy's going to like, he's going to tear me apart because he was very opinionated. Right. Amazing at his job, but uh, I had a, um, had a, had an opinion on everything. I'm like, this guy's going to rip me to shreds. Anyway, fast forward six months to a year and I never forget him saying, look, Dale, out of all the managers that I've had in this business, like you have been the best, one Aye. of the best. And I remember messaging him at Christmas like, a couple of, like years later after I moved on from that job and he's like still to this day man like you've been you that and I was like um, that's what kind of gave me confidence as you were saying mm-hmm, last episode mm-hmm. that you're on the right track and you're doing something I loved oh, I right. loved running teams I loved being in operation I knew I was good at it but it's you still a, have that, uh, that that doubt in the back of your mind of always you, you always you always doubt yourself always oh, yeah, so you always need that reassurance so that's what I talked mm-hmm. about in the last podcast about taking the taking the compliments and actually mm. listening to them and then you can improve for the it, keeps, it keeps you driven isn't it oh, so, aye, aye. so i was losing that drive and that spark in that job simply because i felt i had conquered everything. the only kind of new thing for me to do was either step up or get another new team of people and just do the same that i had already done it didn't really interest me um this is at the same time jillian and i were looking to move back up from england mm. so jillian moved first and then fast forward managed to get another job and uh in fact, this is quite a funny story. So I got a job. The pay rise I got in this job was insane. I think I ended up going from just shy of 30k to over 40 in this one move because I went from day working to night working, right? Mm-hmm. And this was all... So four, were you night shifts? Four days on, four days off. So it oh, was two days. It was 12 and 12, right? So 7am to 7pm, 7am to 7pm. You swapped over 7pm to 7am. That is horrendous. Right? But I, I seen... So I, my drive, some, something that I've... I guess missed over here is my my dri- drive for money. That's where this all stems oh, from. Definitely, definitely. You say it's not from a, at the start. It's not from a money perspective. But honestly, I, that generally was no, where no. I, what, what I'm saying is your your business acumen is not just oh, I don't that. I know. But I think as well, like growing up for me, like any time you asked, like. Oh, how much? How much money do you make? It's like oh, don't you slap in the head oh, and you're right. like, don't well, fucking ask somebody who. who we'll do go back to your story. So like, that's what. My, my my family would never tell me how much they made, etc, etc, right. etc. So I end up being really shit with money. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? No, I was understanding it. Like, it. Like, like, I would like, I make like, what, $1,000 a month. I, I'm just going to spend it then because I, I don't even know what this means. Aye, this is hundreds of money. Like, yeah, you think that's hundreds of money. You yeah. think you think you've got to get to a certain age where you're going to make the money that mm-hmm. you, you see other people making anyway. You see, that's just the path of where your mm-hmm. life takes you. But then you understand, as a fuck. I don't know. I think it must be, a, it must become from like a, a generation of our parents because it was so taboo to talk about money. Oh, I was on money doesn't grow in trees and Aye. all this sort of stuff i was at an event a couple of weeks ago and was like a wee guy was like mm, but money does grow in trees and all that <laughs> it doesn't anymore, but I, so i i was always driving for money and i remember taking that job in bt because it was like you're a 13 grand a year apprentice mm-hmm. and your wage jumps up to 22 Aye. and then it climbs to 28 and i was like 28 grand i remember one of my old mates got a job in the train and he was making 25k and i was like if i'm making 25 grand i am set for life mm-hmm. and what a fucking reality check that oh, is when you get I, that money I just, <laughs> there's not that much just popped in this is bad we could all check our pay slips in in the office so everybody's computers are near each other and i remember one of the older team coaches doing the same job and i'm getting i think i'm clearing maybe 1300 in my paycheck and i turn around and she's looking at us and i'm like 2400 man see if i get to 2400 
have made it. So it was always, to me, it was like, what does a coach make? A coach makes this, right? What does a, a this is a coaching in the in the corporate world. Aye, aye. Uh, what does a manager make? Well, a team manager gets minimum 28 and it climbs up from there and I'm like, right, there's the goal I'm going to get from aye, there. Aye. That's going to be my drive. Got to there, right, right what did I do for you? To get a big bonus or a big jump in your pay, you'd be, you'd be good at your job, right? I'm going to be good at my job. Aye, aye. And as a, as a byproduct, so I'm not even chasing this, this got me good at my craft. Mm-hmm. But that drive for money was always there. Um, and then I got this job in Sheffield, so this four on, four off. Now, at the time, we gave our house up in Nottingham. So Gillian moved back up to her mum's in uh, Falkirk. And <clears throat> what I decided to do, not, I guess it's because I'm a tight bastard. I never seen I never seen the value in paying for a hotel or anything, right? Or paying for some digs. Because we gave up our house in Nottingham. Sheff- the, the job I had was in Sheffield, so it was about an hour drive. Right. And I was like, right, you know what? Once we give this house up, I'll come up because I've got four days off. You had the abundance of time. You had all this time, but it kind of ran out. So it, didn't, it went in as quick as you thought, quicker than you thought. And I would drive down before my shift started at seven. So I would have to leave at two in the morning, half one in the morning. Sometimes if I made good time on the motorway at that time, I'd stop into services and shut my eyes for a wee half an hour, 40 minutes. Right. And I would work my 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. shift. In this job, they had a kitchen. So I would go down to Tesco and I would grab steaks and I'd make my food. There's a pure gym just down the road. I'd go down there, I'd train, I'd shower, brush my teeth, back up to the car park. So the, the, there's always someone working in that building because it's it was to in case any systems went down in the business. Basically, you were a back, you were you were employed just in case shit goes wrong. And the, so the car park was always accessible. It wasn't a huge car park, but I used to park my car at the back and I'd put my seats down and I'd sleep in there. Seven p.m. Get up about four thirty go down to the gym, work out, come back in about an hour before my shift. See, that's, that's how money does go on trees. <laughs> don't so, fucking spend it. <laughs> exactly. So, um, but the beauty of this job was people were always in that kitchen cooking. So mm-hmm. then they look, like, so nobody was going, what are you doing cooking at this time? Ah, yeah, so yeah, I could yeah, go yeah. in there like an hour before my, ch- my, my shift and I could cook some eggs and that. So that's how I managed it. I was like, I'm onto something here. So the, the challenging thing was when you w- finished work at 7pm, and then you weren't there working until the next morning. Mm. So I joined a David, I uh, know, a Bannantine's gym up in Rotherham, and I'd drive there, and it was on the motorway. It was just, sorry, it was just off the motorway. It had a service station, it had a Morrison's, but then it had the pulse on and that. So I'd chill in there for four hours until it shut. And then when it shut, I'd drive around to the services with all the lorries. And, and you, just you still sleep. So you've got a wife <laughs> after this? So mm. I, it's quite funny that telling this story because I was like, please don't. Obviously, I told her. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I said, Dad's like, don't tell your mum. I said, like, let's ah, just not I tell know, her parents because you know what parents can be like. Right, what is he up to, man? Honestly, it was. It, Saved money. Aye. It wasn't. It wasn't all about the money aspect. It's just I didn't value getting a hotel. Aye. I remember once Jelly and I, for my birthday or a present, she's like, "I've got your hotel," and I was like, I "Didn't need to do that." She's like, "No, go, like go for it. Like actually get a decent sleep and all this." And I was like, aye, "All right, aye. <laughs> 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 I've got your bed to sleep in." <laughs> I know how crazy uh, is that. That's brilliant. Thanks but, very much. But see, the thing is, I finished work the time I went to the gym and I got home to this hotel because you couldn't check in before. I couldn't check in at seven in the morning, so I checked in at like eight, nine at night put my head down, I'm back up at four, and I was like, how much was that? It was like 90 quid, and I was like, that's a waste of money, honestly, I'm cool with sleeping in my car. Aye. Um, so I've done that for six months, and that taught me, like... Aye, a, lot of resil- take- a, lot, a lot of mental resilience to do that, you know what I mean? I, I, who are we, was, were we speaking about this or somebody, I think I was speaking to like, one of my clients about this, and it was like, what is it with men that just want to go through... Like, pain? Like pain and toughness, and I, I don't know if it is a male thing, or it's just... Uh, we, like we're too things are too easy well, for us in uh, this life well I, I don't know if many people are listening but uh, to cease testosterone to sto- one of the things testosterone is does is the competitiveness so mm. you want to be competitive with yourself so if you think anything will better you you will do it mm. do you know what I mean if you have high testosterone and you are like, raring to go then you will do things that will put you out of your comfort zone yeah so for instance that if I get <clears> up and have a cold shower every fucking single morning and, put you through I, it. and I, I get under with my head and I make sure I shiver before I get my head out. So what I do is I jump in the shower, head under, wait until I'm absolutely freezing. And then when I start shivering, I'll, I'll, I'll just take my head out and obviously wash my body. Mm-hmm. So I'm really fucking freezing, but I make sure I'm shiver because the whole point is get, getting in that mental resilience. But also it does, it, it, it releases it really releases hormones. As soon as you start shivering, you release, release all these hormones. But obviously doing things like that, that mental resilience, as soon as you come out of that, you're a different person. Do you, know, do you know what I like? I actually remember sitting in the cell because I couldn't like be on my phone a lot because then I'd have to run my car and keep it charging and the, the car that I had at the time, the charging bit was always fucked. So I remember sitting there and you're just 
you yourself is is quiet. Mm. You just wear your thoughts, and I was like. I'm going to make it one day and I'm going to remember these moments. Ah, yeah, I like, that's oh, that weird. Aye, aye. That actually gives me shivers thinking ah, about that. Aye, it's aye. a wee bit weird. But uh, Jillian was the same. She's like, see if you like ever, like if like our businesses or whatever, ever like take off. And we're, I would say, I'd say I'm successful. Just now I'd say mm-hmm. made it. I, I would say, but I'd uh, say, honestly, I'd say, I say, I say that to Jillian all the time. You have to kind of, we were sitting back there then and like, we need to think like, look, we've got a house. Mm-hmm. Um, we're now married. We're mm-hmm. now like in a really good position where, yeah, okay, there's things that can fucking, always be better. Is that fucking digs at me or something? <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 I'm just... no, no, it's fucking all right. <laughs> fucking dirty bastard. <laughs> uh, you, you'll find your person. Oh, you'll find aye. your person. <laughs> um, but I, so I remember like, like just appreciating what you've got. So, mm-hmm. um, but I, so I just fast forward to the, oh, you can ask us any question, but fast forward to the... No, just, I'm, I'm all happy. I'm so, happy. Um, I guess COVID hit was when the wake up call was for me. Moved back? So did you just move back? So yeah, so I I'd done there? that job when for six i done that job for six months. I still in BT. When you came up to Falkirk, when did you move into Hoosby there? Uh, no, so um we were I was in that job and Jillian had a job through in Edinburgh and then I managed to get a job in Edinburgh and still the BT chain, mm-hmm. but it was open reach at the time. Right. So we were um managed to get a job in open reach and um through the one of the apprentices that I started with, Leslie, she managed to um, say that this role was coming up. So I got that and then I moved in with Jillian's mum. So we were back to Scotland and we we're just looking for houses. Um, so I was running a team through and running an operation, I would, I'd say more, through in Edinburgh. And through this whole time, I guess something that I'm not saying is I've always been interested in personal training. Like I said, people over those years, mm-hmm. you're the PT guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you, sorry, you're the you're the fitness guy. You make me a plan. Can you help make it? Or oh, why? Why do you do cardio at this time? Or why do you do that? So I always, I was curious about it, and I started Aye. listening to podcasts. Started reading up about different things because I was learning with my, m- myself too. Like I went into bodybuilding, I came out of bodybuilding feeling shit, and I was like, right, what else is there? Like, oh, there's, there's this message about chase health. Let me let me see what that's about. Aye. So I'll get into that in in a wee sec. But that that's always been curious. And I, I remember sitting in pure gyms at like f- half four in the morning, waiting for somebody to to, to come in. Uh, sorry, training myself, seeing the first PT come in the door, seeing them with their client. I remember thinking, man, I could do I, better. I, 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 honestly, no, that I could do better. I was just like, that's a good, that's a cool job, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I was like, nah, I'm paid well. Like, I'm in a safe job and, and all that stuff. Like, I'm doing good for myself. Like, I, I think that's one of the other things that uh, parents and that put on you is be, have that safety blanket. Oh, man. Safety, safety, safety. Aye. You know, you can be in this job for the rest of your life and be nice and comfortable. When I realised, Fuck that safety blanket! I became so much happier. Oh, I and and I only I only just done it recently, but I remember leaving school and uh, families like, oh, "What are you going to do now?" I was going to be a PT. I went to college, and then I was making money. I was making deliveries. Aye. I was doing delivery jobs, and I worked for uh, my stepdad at the time as well. So I was getting cash in hand, and I was like. I like having money more and aye, then my drive for money just overpowered my actual desire of passion and whatever aye, I had so, but that's always been a voice in the back of my head so I've always been curious I remember sitting next to PTs training their clients I'd pause my phone I'd be doing my set and I'd be like he's doing his set and I was like oh it's an interesting way of communicating that and then so think of that over the space of 10 years of training mm-hmm. that every like always been curious um, always kind of talking to PTs always like like still a wee bit taboo about money because I thought the reason I never got into PT initially was there's no old PTs and anytime I spoke to my parents about it there's no it, old PTs as in 28 older, <laughs> older PTs <laughs> <laughs> there's like you look at you look at careers and things like that and Aye, like, they don't, they don't really see a guy in his, long time. very rare do you see a guy in his 50s mm-hmm. close to retirement and stuff like that so I was like Ah, it's really probably best that I go into into Aye. the corporate world. Um, so what about so yeah, so we back up operations and then I moved into the engine. So in operations, this was I would say this was the next step up career wise. Running a bigger team, bigger operations, more experience, dealing with a lot more director type people. Mm. Um and that kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Fast forward a wee rear COVID hit the the operations said it's own drama and things like that but I was like right what's next for me I'm getting here's that I've lost that spark I had the spark initially like Aye. what's next and then another job came up which was another step up which is this was something I was, was quite excited for I was like this is it money wise like mm-hmm. there'll no be yes. no, honestly that I was thinking like this I'll get this for life. a company car and, I, and this is this so is cushy. this is big bucks in my eyes at the mm-hmm. time and I thought right I'm going to go in for it and I was going for it for for the audience, like people that's listening to this, 
this was a, I was going to take over an engineering team and I have no engineering experience. So I like if you had to if you were backing a horse, I was I had I was the one running with three legs, I right? Was, did you say that? <laughs> Maybe even two legs. Right. So I didn't I didn't think about I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna show them that doesn't matter where you are, lead, leadership wise, I'm I'm the guy to have and managed to get this job over engineers that were applying for it, engineers that were covering teams. Like I felt I felt pretty proud and Couple of, couple of months into that, the spark was gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, in fact, I tell a lie, like a couple of weeks. weeks right. I'm not even getting the weeks went first. So I was like, right, cool. So we do this, right? Okay, you do this and you go out and do visits and you do this. And then I thought to myself, holy shit, it's the same. Mm-hmm. It's the same, just at a higher level. Aye. It's the exact same. I had, a, I had more people and I'll get less time. I think, like, uh, when you look at studies and that, they say once you reach over like £60,000 or £50,000 in salary, <laughs> Your life does not change. Like the, the mental aspect towards money does not change. Yeah. So you need to be tra- chasing something that you oh, aye, genuinely for sure, really enjoy. For sure. So, and I was like, fuck, I felt like, I, I just like, no. I was like, what, what did I do? I, mem- I remember going back and forth with Jelly and I was like, we, we actually t- it tested our relationship because I was a, a, a moody bastard, more so than what I am now. Uh, but I was going to say, like, fuck man. <laughs> like, it's harder like as it, it, is. it did. It just like bled off into everything that, that like outside my life. And I was like, what is it that I want to do and then I was like you know what fitness wise this is like I've always said I wanted to go into PT and mm-hmm. I started training people from my garage gym a year before alongside this job friends that start, uh, uh, friends and family started with Jillian's sister and then Jillian's mum came on board and then um, my mate reached out to me and then my mate's brother came to me and then his girlfriend and, just, uh, and then I was like oh, I love this but see when you were talking about last episode thinking back to when you you think back to how you train people i was like man i was xls i was like right i'm gonna write everything down oh, uh, right weight wise i think we were lifting this last time let's lift this again aye, aye, so aye. It, was, it was a shambles and i think back but i had that spark and i was like you know what i'm go, gonna go, go for it anyway i i'm gonna pay a course and i'm gonna do a crash course at night aye study for it similar to you mm-hmm. it's like wow all the shit this oh, is man so mentally so exhausting so mentally, like terribly like i don't I even know sca- why so it's just so hard mentally just to push yourself through that i i was, I was skipping over modules and i was like right let me just go to the, the exam and i'd be reading the question like where's the like what's the desire to so come I, me i'll know, I'll know why like when i done mine i would read the question and go and fucking type in oh i done that as well so i, I would type in the, the the big words that were in it and it would take me to the page in the module and i would just write it in aye. and i would just continuously do that and exactly then, like when i once, control f I, <laughs> once i sent that away it took so fucking long to aye. actually go through so my i done my exam on like because you doing it from home this was this was the one beauty of covid because i didn't have to go in and i knew if i went in somewhere i'd flop it because i hadn't been reading as much of the materials as i should because it, it, well, did it you, didn't would you have to have done an exam in person yeah yeah so oh, i would have had to do it like right, where right, it was yeah, marked so it was that. a wee bit open book right. so i would have on my phone the, the thing for your phone was don't let your phone time out so i'd have my phone up and you've seen the setup i've got i've got three screens aye, aye. i'd have the Engineer module the paperwork and then i'd have google and any question I get asked, I was like, right, cool. Don't get me wrong, there was someone I was like, boom, boom. And I was like, easy peasy. I know what the microbiome is in this, in this cell. I know what, I, um, I know the synovial fluid that sits between the, between the joints. And I was like, I'm, I'm learning something. But then I was like, that, I, I, do you know what? I tell you, thinking back to it, I can see where some value lies, but there's a lot that doesn't, what done it, I'll tell you what done it for me. I had to, so in my practical work, I had to write a program for a lady that I've never met before. Um, the criteria was she was 75 years old, she had all these pains and she had, but she had sign off from the doctor that she could work out. Mm. And there was 10 slots of exercises that you can do. I filled out three of basic movements, mm. but I wrote a comment at the bottom saying, I would actually be taking this person through a movement assessment before I planned any workout for them. Mm. And I sent it back. The guy responded to me saying, there's 10 boxes there, I need you to fill out 10 exercises. Uh, and that, I, that was pretty similar to me. Like, we, <laughs> I got to a point where I was like, well, I'm just, I, I'm not going to try and do this the way, it, like, it was like a programme card, write this programme card, and I was like, writing it like with what I would actually set up for myself uh, and what I would set up for other people. And he was like, nah, you just need to fill in the boxes. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, well, so I just made up exercises. And then it's like they were, t- they didn't give a, they are, they're so disconnected for the world to the examiners. Oh, I. Don't get me wrong, there's always bad people in the jobs that they do, but there might be some good in there. But the, I think the people, the, where I went and hearing from other PTs, it all seems to be the same. Well, it's the same. Course. They're just looking for you to do the, do the exam pass and get you to fuck. True. And then <clears> if you do well, you do well. If you don't, you don't. Like, they yeah. don't really, they don't care. 
know what I mean? They've, they've got it, and then they're off. No, easy, easy. So I so the um, got my I got my qualification, but when I realised I wasn't taking that job, you get a bonus as a manager every year in June, and I was like, here, I've gave this company nine years. Don't care if it's a new operations I'm in. I've worked hard this last couple of years through COVID, and. I'll be, I'll be steering us through. So I was binding my time and I was trying to do stuff. I, do you know something in me? I feel bad for the guys that I was running. I was their leader. I tried to be the best leader I could, but see how hard that was going. And I'm, I'm going to be your guy when, when I leave. Ah, I, can, aye, I aye. want to help you. So I'd still be giving that job everything. So much so that when, see when I handed my notice and I stayed an extra three months, mm. my notice was one month. Mm. Um, I stayed an extra three months to help them out. Even though I was good to go, I'd say my, my, my goal was save up six months worth of bills. Mm. So I don't have to worry, and now I'm going to make this PT, uh, PT thing work. work right. And if it doesn't work, I'll not well, burn my bridges and I'll fall back. That's to again, that's another thing. Uh, money stresses, people get caught up in money stresses. Mm-hmm. If you just sit for <clears throat> six, to a, six months to a year of your life just working hard, mm-hmm. like, and genuinely working hard, like working every hour you can, your money stresses will pretty close disappear. And I understand that anybody's listening, they might have kids or that. That is, that is different. But if you're a single person and you're out there struggling for money, and you have no health issues, then you can work seven to eight hours a week for six to mo- six months to a year and get out of the situation. Yeah, that's in. something we skipped over with yours because you you done a you done a graph to like yeah, work, yeah. work up the bank balance a little yeah, bit. Didn't yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I had no savings uh, when COVID hit, and then I had like over over five figures. Do you know what I mean? A year later, I'll tell the tax man. Eh? No, <laughs> do I, we won't we won't put any we won't go into details but I saved a lot of money in that time when I was working 78 eight hours every single week mm-hmm. obviously after furlough ended that was right in there and right. uh, that's what I would say to everybody if you're single and you here's my number <laughs> <laughs> no but if you're single and you you love your parents there's no reason why you should be skint mm. do you know what I mean I, I personally I personally believe that do you know what I mean I, I, no, I can see where you come from so um, bye yeah, so that's that's what kind of led me to eventually making the 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 stint and getting into into PT but as I said there's no it wasn't just like a, a rash decision but and you've, you've got to look at that like how much effort you put in just becoming a PT like mm-hmm. what people do is I'm going to become a PT do the course and then bang you already had that structure of I'm going to have six months because you knew when you first went in there I'm not going to make that much yeah do you know what I mean I'm going to do a lot of work for free like you need to do a lot of work for free you need to learn how to coach people because even if you know how to coach like, and you say in your head I know how to coach mm-hmm. you don't really you meet new people and you're like fuck man how this the is, fuck uh-huh. do I get them to do this mm-hmm. I, I can't get them to do this for them how do I get them to do this like uh-huh. I'm, I'm going through everything that works with everybody and there's always one person who just can't get it mm-hmm. I think uh, I, I, and I think as well over the over those nine ten years of working out I was always, I was still learning. My own time was listening to fitness podcasts. It mm. was um, watching YouTube videos of different bodybuilders, different form learning through that whole time as well. I think if I tally up how much I've spent working with different coaches myself and buying different programs, I'm sitting at around, I'd say close to 10k of mm. different programs. And let me tell you, there's a lot of crap out there. Oh, there's a lot of shit. And that's what driven drove my passion of there's a there's still a big market and I thought I, so anyone that you think oh PT look at Wisher for example we could probably rhyme off 30 PTs I think straight easily, away easily. so people look at it and say ah, PT market's saturated but I'm telling you like even within that no. I think everyone in PT is definitely trying to do their best I, I honestly believe they're trying to do their best to help people mm-hmm. there's a small group that are ruining it to make a quick buck well, there's, a, there's definitely and there's but the people who are doing it there's so many people out there who have really good intentions but they don't put the effort in mm-hmm. do you know what I mean and you 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 know and I know the effort that is required to give a good service is fucking a lot harder than you think aye definitely way harder definitely so so aye, that's my that's my journey that's where it took me to yeah. aye any more questions on that? No, no, Mr. no. Mr. Interview guy. Ah, uh, yeah, no, no. It was, uh, it's obviously good to hear that. <laughs> I think that everybody can learn so many things for that. See, like, having a, if you want to go into your passion, you need to build up to it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's not just, I'm going to be this the next day. It's, I'm going to have this yeah. structure, you know, I'm going to save up for six months and then I'm going to get into it. Because you realise a lot of people's passions don't make them much money to start with. No, they don't, they don't. But uh, there's that, that quote, if you... If you um, 
do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. But it's been the opposite for me. Like I, I do love everything I do. You but work every day in your life as well. I do something you love, and I, I love it. The the twist on it, which is you'll work harder than anyone else at your craft because you mm. want it to work. Like, aye, aye. And that's and that's the beauty of it. So, um, so yeah, we spoke obviously. Folks know that we we are from Gym Twenty Four. If aye. you're just tuning into this episode, then yeah, we we're out Gym Twenty Four in in, in Wisha and similar to yourself. I, I don't. I just don't know what attracted me. Manny asked me that question. He was like, "Why? Why did you choose here? Because I live over on planes aye, outside Dundry, and he said there's like ten dr- gyms that you drive by to go aye, here. Aye, aye. I don't know. I just like the. I like the marketing, and I, I remember walking in, and he's he's over at the 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 fly machine, and I was like, "Can I speak to the owner?" And he's like. That's me. <laughs> I was like, how you doing, man? And you know what, man? He's like, it's like, it's quite hard to, to read him oh, at the start. Yes, and I was like, yes, yes. so I'm just about to qualify my PT. I was like, look, I've been in space for a wee while. I've been training some clients and that. And he's like, right, right. And then I thought, I thought the people that I was learning off, I thought they were big names. Mm-hmm. And I'll say now that no man is not on social media. I so he, no he, idea. Yeah, so, he, so, so I was, so I thought doing. that was going to be my way of like, oh, this guy, he's been learning off him. He knows his stuff. Aye. So I was name dropping people and he was like, don't know who that is aye, and aye, i was like aye. oh yeah um, i so uh, but i've also been uh, doing Listen, this and he's like ah, don't know who that is and, he's like, <laughs> and i was like man i'm bombing this this and i was like i'm just in i'm gonna work out he said i work out and i can tell so he's clean right this is this is a, a story that's came back to me so you know how meticulous manny is way how clean the place has to be right Crazy. so i seen he's cleaning it and then the place looks spotless and i had my first uh coach crosser jumper that jillian got me and it was gray mm. but you know when you get a new jumper it's got the oozy bits inside mm. so i'm on the lap pull down and i'm working up a sweat so i went to take my jumper off and oos went everywhere and i was like <gasps> he's got his hat on it i was like i didn't even clean it up i just <laughs> i was like from my water up and i was like Ah, that was it already. I'm going to, I'm going to just, just go walk by this, and I, I remember saying, well, I, I, "Good gym, good gym." I'll and hopefully see you soon. He goes, "I'll be in touch." Aye. And then he, he reached out to us, and he reached out to us, and he, um, he asked us to come in an interview and met Tony, and mm. the rest is history. The rest so, is history. The rest, the rest is, is history. So, t- t- why don't you tell us quickly about your like your months of training then? Because you've obviously been training at the gym for like eight months now. I know. Nov- I so well, it was no vet. I so it's actually coming up to a year. So, and this is quite crazy to think. I think we should do another episode on um, the PT side of things, like how right, to like, like that, five like five aye, tips aye. Like, to get aye, started to get with your started. PT. Oh, I definitely. Because um, we like we, I think we both went through a lot of a lot of learning there. So, I came in November. I didn't not understand gyms too much. Knew about PT in, but I was curious to learn about the business side of things. So once you know how the business side of things, you can start thinking right. How do how can I benefit this place? So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. similar to yourself, learn classes and. I, I was never interested in the, um, I was more interested in the self-employment side. I wanted to be my own brand, my own person. But I know um, Manny, he wanted, like, he was looking for staff. And I said to him, like, I'm quite Aye. curious to learn if there's space for me to come in. And I, lo and behold, he, he's, he's, he's supported us through that. So, mm-hmm. But throughout that journey, it's just literally been a, I was, to put it in perspective, I went over there on Boxing Day and I was hustling on that floor, oh cleaning aye. up plates and just, how's it going, man? Oh, you're in here working off the turkey. But for anyone who don't know, Dale, Dale <coughs> I can talk here, but Dale can talk to MD anytime, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> It's you know just, I mean? it doesn't it's, even matter what mood he's in, he can talk to him. I'm like, pfft, man. Just I get in that mood, I'm like, don't even talk to me, man. <laughs> get away. It's just a natural gift. Mm, um, a gift. Uh, uh, sorry, I guess it's something that's been refined over years aye. and years, but I remember speaking to a guy, he's still my client, Liam, um, speaking to him, and he was like, oh, I was looking for a PT, boom. And I'm, so I'm not a sales guy, I would never like pitching that, but it's the way you... you, you like people need to like you before you go into this, oh, and that's yeah. why I think I there's like there's a lot of value. I think we can communicate to, mm-hmm. to newer PTs and how oh, to yeah. grow your business and stuff. So to put it in perspective, from um, officially kicking off in January, I would say was when I've started um, trying to grow my business. It took me one month to get my books full. I would say I, I put them in. Um, I'm saying that holding up quotation fingers here, but because um, I've not actually closed my books until recently, but I, I had north of 30 clients in that in that short space of time. And, and don't get me wrong, a lot of them were free, but a good majority of them had stuck on, on and I ended up either 
upselling to a block or upselling a program or upselling something from Aye. from majority of those people. So that's what kind of gave me reassurance I, I I'm on the right path. I think what a lot of people when they obviously go into PT, even if they're going out for free or they're paying, that always that first month they're like, I'm not going to pay that much or I'm not going to pay at all. Mm. And then after you give them that first month, they're like, you know what, that actually I, I feel Show the value. ten times better. That's what I said. So I feel ten times better. And they're like, right, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come on. There's, there's so many, there's so many golden nuggets there. But I, I think we do another episode on that. But um, if, if it just gives you the opportunity because you need to do well, don't you? You need to show value in oh, the first aye, while. Aye. So, um, but yeah, so that's. That's a wee background about me, folks. I'm sure that we've both missed over quite a lot many, of stuff. Many, many things, many, uh, many. But it's, it's, it's obviously hard to go to everything all the time. I know, I know. It's, I know. Hard. it's, it's hard. even hard for us to like communicate because nobody's really asked, oh, what would what, you do? What's your background? Mm -hmm. like, how long have you been... Like, it's like basic questions. Ah, this yeah, is yeah, like actual interview style. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it was a wee bit weird in, in Gavin's uh, podcast. Ah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. If, you, if you ever see Gavin's podcast, I fucking went on to that, man. Ah, yeah. Well, I guess I don't know when we'll release this, but it's probably worth shouting out. So his, his podcast is called Chat Shit Get Cancelled. Um, um, that was a, that was our first experience on a podcast. Uh, obviously, right here, right now, but we are pretty confident. But that that we were nervous as fuck for that, yeah. and uh, we will always appreciate that he he got us on. Oh, there. nice, definitely sound guy, definitely. Uh, really nice guy, and we had a wee chat before it, and that really mm -hmm. got us fired up to do this. Do you know what I mean? So that's like, what, that is after being on that, we're like we better do that. Sparked the sparked the um the, the grit to go and get after this. So, mm -hmm. um, I, that's Gavin McKinley, PT. I'm sure he has his Instagram handle is. So, so look, I think we're just over 30 minutes with this. So, let's, well, we wrap it up let's here. Wrap so, up. so we'll do the social media call it. So, obviously, uh, we are personal trainers, by the way. And we're personal trainers in Gym24. And my social media handle is Raw Gym Fit. So, R A W J I M F I T. Cool. And you can find me at Coach Crosser, which is C R O S S A R. Um, we do have a joint page, so the the podcast that you listen to is uh, Bulletproof Mindset UK. Um, on Instagram's Bulletproof Mindset UK. UK yep. Cool. Right. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice one, you sexy bastards. <laughs>